In this video, we're going to make a portfolio optimizer. In particular, we're going to take these three stocks, Apple, Apple, General Electric, and Netflix, and we're going to combine them in a portfolio that maximizes the expected Sharpe ratio of, of that portfolio. That is to say that we're looking to maximize the excess return uh, relative uh, to the standard deviation of that portfolio. So uh, to, to begin with, I have given you the returns for Apple, GE, and Netflix. These are monthly returns over a five-year period. We're going to make some simplifying assumptions in this portfolio optimization exercise simply because I want to focus on the portfolio optimization and not some of the other complications with estimating expected returns or uh, a floating or a a varying risk-free rate. So in this portfolio optimization exercise, we're going to assume the risk-free rate is 0.05% per month. Um, we're also going to assume the expected returns for each of these stocks, Apple, GE, and Netflix, is their average return over the previous five years. You could do this in a more complicated way, um, perhaps by using CAPM, to estimate expected returns, but for now, I just want to focus on the portfolio optimization exercise. So the first step is to actually calculate those expected returns. So what I'm gonna do for Apple is I'm going to take the average return over the last five years to uh, estimate Apple's expected return. And then I'm going to do the same thing for GE and Netflix. So I'm just dragging that over. Okay, so we've calculated the expected returns for Apple, GE, and Netflix. So Apple has an expected return of 1.15% per month, GE 1.23% 1 1 per month, and Netflix 4.96% per month. Once again, you could do, estimate these in a more complicated way, but for now, we're just going to use those as our expected returns. All right, the next step to calculating the optimal portfolio is to estimate a weighted variance-covariance matrix. I've taken the liberty to set up what this will look like um, before I created this video, but you might have to make this on your own later. So what I've done is I've put the three stocks on the in one column and in one row, and I've also put weights. Uh, you'll see why this is important. For now, though, we're just going to put in dummy weights. Uh, so for Apple, I'm just going to say it's one, meaning it's 100% of our portfolio, GE is zero, and Netflix is zero. Now, um, the this column here has to equal the same weights as the row up there, um, up here. Oop. And so I'm just going to incorporate those cells by reference. So I'm going to say this cell G11 is equal to H10. And then I'm going to do the same thing for I, what is that, 10? And the same thing for Netflix. The reason I'm setting this up this way is uh, when I change the weight on GE, let's say I want it to be 50% of my portfolio and Apple to be 50% of my portfolio, the weights in the column also change. For now, these are dummy weights, and these are the weights that we're going to optimize in order to maximize the expected Sharpe ratio of our portfolio. The next step is to calculate the variance uh, uh, component of the variance-covariance matrix. So the variance component is going to be the diagonal of the variance-covariance matrix. So it's going to be this cell for Apple, this cell for General Electric, and this cell for Netflix. So we're going to use the sample estimator for variance in Excel. 
and that's var dot s. Now we're going to do the same thing for GE and for Netflix. All right, so we've set up the variance component of the variance covariance matrix. Now we need to estimate these off diagonal cells, and these cells are the covariance. So in this cell right here, I11, we're going to be estimating the covariance between Apple and GE. So to do that, we use Excel's covariance function, and we're going to use the sample estimator because we have a finite sample. And so I'm going to highlight the Apple uh, series of returns and do the same thing for GE. So this number right here, this 0 0.0012, is the covariance uh, between Apple and GE's returns over this five-year window. For the variance-covariance matrix, we need to fill in both these upper cells and these lower cells. Importantly, the, uh, the covariance between Apple and GE is the same as the covariance between Apple or between GE and Apple. So this cell right here will also equal that cell. And that's because the covariance is symmetrical with respect to whether it's the covariance of Apple with GE or GE with Apple. We're going to do this for the other three stocks, or the other two stocks, Netflix and Apple. So we're going to estimate the covariance. Once again, because the covariance between Apple and Netflix is the same as the covariance between Netflix and Apple, we can say this cell, H13, is equal to that cell. And then finally, the covariance between GE and Netflix And then we set this cell equal to that one. All right, the next step is to calculate each stock's contribution uh, to the variance of the total portfolio. This uh, normally would require some matrix algebra, but fortunately, we can actually uh, do a cheater way, so to speak, in Excel. It's still correct. It's just not uh, the matrix version of this calculation. So to calculate uh, the contribution of Apple, Apple stock, to the portfolio's total variance, what we do is we first multiply the weight of Apple, and then we're going to use an, an Excel function called sum product. And then we're going to highlight the weights for each um, of these stocks in the column. And it's going to be important to lock these cells down. So if you hit F4, if you're on a, um, a Windows machine, it will put the dollar signs in the appropriate places to lock those cells down. But we're going to do the sum product between the weights and the variance and covariance is of Apple with the other stocks in the portfolio. So what this uh, the this function sum product is doing is it's multiplying the weight on Apple times in this case the variance of Apple. 
then it's also multiplying the weight on General Electric times the covariance between Apple and General Electric. And then it's multiplying the weight on Netflix times the covariance between Apple and Netflix. So after it does those multiplications between those numbers, those numbers, and those numbers, it adds them all up. So it's the sum of the products. This number right here is the contribution of Apple to the variance of the portfolio. We're going to do the same thing for General Electric and Netflix, and we can do that simply by dragging over. And this is why it's so important to lock those cells down for the weights. Because when we drag over the, um, this calculation, uh, we want those weights to stay constant, or the references to those weights to stay constant. Okay, the next step is uh, to create some of the inputs that we're going to use for the solver function in Excel, or the optimizer function of Excel. So one thing we need to do is we need to create a sum of weights. So this is going to be the sum oops, of all these weights. This is going to be important because in our optimizer, we're going to force the sum of the weights of each stock in our portfolio to be equal to one. This means that all our cash is invested in some asset in our portfolio. We're also going to need to know the portfolio's expected return. For this one, we're also going to use the sum product um, function of Excel. And we're going to multiply the expected returns we calculated earlier by the weights that we're going to set in our portfolio. We need to calculate the portfolio's standard deviation. Um, this will become important for calculating the expected Sharpe ratio, which is, at the end of the day, what we're optimizing. But uh, to calculate the portfolio's standard deviation, if you remember, the standard deviation of a portfolio is the square root of its variance. Well, it turns out that if we add up the contribution to variance of all three stocks, we'll get the portfolio's variance. So if at that point we take the square root, we'll have the portfolio's standard deviation. Finally, we need to uh, put the expected sharp ratio in as a function. So remember, the expected Sharpe ratio is the ex excess return over the portfolio standard deviation. All right. Now that we've got this all set up, we can now do the actual optimization. That is to find the, the weights on each of these three stocks that will maximize the expected Sharpe ratio. To do this, we're going to use Excel's solver, which is under data and then over here under analysis solver. If you don't see it, you might have to install it as an um, additional add-on package, and you can find out how to do that in another video. All right, so I've, I've set up the solver um, already. You'll have to do this yourself, but the objective of this solver is to maximize whatever is in cell M11. Well, cell M11 is the expected Sharpe ratio. This is what we want. We want to maximize the expected Sharpe ratio. We're going to do this maximization by changing certain uh, variable cells, which in this case 
is the weights on each of those stocks in the portfolio. So but we're asking uh, Excel to maximize the Sharpe ratio by changing cells H10 through H or through J10, that is the weights on this portfolio, or the weights on each asset in this portfolio. I've also set up a number of constraints in this uh, optimization. I don't want any short selling in this, um, in this portfolio, so I've set the weights to be zero or positive, so they cannot be negative. A negative weight would be indicative of a short position. That's something that we don't want at this, this point in time. I've also set up um, the, the uh, weights of the portfolio have to equal one. That is, all our cash has to be deployed. The cell M8 is the sum of the weights of each asset in our portfolio. So at this point, all you have to do, well, hopefully, all you have to do is hit solve. And solver found a solution. That's what we want. So what Solver just did was it changed these three cells to 0 0.24, 0 0.53, and 0.24. And these are the weights on our portfolio that will um, maximize the expected Sharpe ratio. So if the weights on this, uh, on this portfolio are, um, or on these assets is 24%, 53%, and 24%, we expect a sharp ratio of 0.37. We expect that portfolio to have a standard deviation of 5.46% per month uh, or using monthly returns and a portfolio expected return of 2.09% for a month. Because we can change um, the inputs to uh, Excel, um, or into this optimization exercise uh, in a later video. Uh, what I want to do right now is simply to hard code those, these values so that we know what the optimal weights are. And now we know what the optimal weights for a portfolio that maximizes the expected Sharpe ratio of that portfolio.